Hey everyone, so today I'm filming kind of like an old school YouTube video that's been making its way back around again and I love this video idea so much. I always watch these videos if they pop up in my subscription feed and I remember them being so popular back in the day. So today I'm sharing the makeup products I would buy first if I was to lose all of my makeup and I had to start over again. I've done videos like this in the past. I think I usually do film this every year but I usually narrow it down to 10 products. So for today's video I included more than 10. I included what I would truly like go out and repurchase to create a full face of makeup, have a couple of different options. For the most part, I have one product in each category, but I did sometimes include like a bonus product that if I wanted to purchase two, I would grab as well. I wanted to make it a little bit more realistic than just choosing 10 products because truthfully, I would go out and buy more than 10, but this is still like a very minimal downsized version of my makeup collection. And these are some of my staples that I reach for every single day. So I did apply everything for you on camera so you can see the products in action. And I'll link my previous videos in the description box below, but I believe Emily Noel actually started this trend years ago. I don't know if I can find her original video, but I'll link her channel below. She has tons of great video ideas. She has always been one of my favorites. So I'm glad to see her version of this video going back around again. So let's Let's jump into it and we'll start with base products. Okay, so the first primer that I would run out and repurchase right away would be this one from e.l.f. It is their Power Grip Primer, but the one that has 4% niacinamide in it. I love the original Power Grip Primer, and honestly, they're both very, very similar, but there's just something about this one that makes my skin look extra good. I feel like my skin looks extra smooth, extra glowy, but because it does have that tackiness to it, it locks my makeup into place so well, even when my skin is a little bit more oily. It feels really hydrating on the skin, and honestly, it just plays well with my base products. Like no matter what foundation I wear on top of this product, for the most part, it looks so good and it wears so well throughout the day. So I love this product. It's definitely my favorite primer. I feel like if I wanted a smoothing primer, I could grab something, but honestly, a lot of the time, like my moisturizer does a great job too, but I do feel like this one really extends the wear of my makeup. I didn't include two products in every category, but if there were two products, I honestly feel like I would run out and buy right away. I wanted to mention them. So this one is the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Set and Refresh Spray. They technically market it as a setting spray or something you can spray on your face to kind of refresh your makeup throughout the day, but I actually use it as a priming spray. It's not quite as intense as the original Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Primer or the e.l.f. Primer. If you want your makeup to last all day long, then this is a great option. But if you just want to quickly prime your face, maybe you did your skincare earlier in the day and you just want to refresh your skin before going in with makeup, this product is perfect. It is so quick and easy. It just hydrates my skin. It's very refreshing. And I feel like it provides a little bit of, not like a full on tacky base, but just something to kind of prime my skin before going in with makeup. I feel like my makeup applies better on top of this product. It does last a little bit longer versus if I was to skip primer altogether. And I just love the way it feels. So usually if I'm doing light coverage makeup or I'm in a hurry, this is what I'll reach for versus if I want my makeup to last all day long or I want like that extra smooth glowy look, I'll reach for this. Foundation was a very obvious one for me. The Catrice True Skin has been my favorite for years and it is easily my most worn foundation. It's a very adaptable foundation. So no matter what type of makeup look I'm going for, I feel like I can get that with this foundation. If I want a little bit more of a light coverage natural look, I'll use like half a pump and really work it into the skin. If I want more of a true full coverage look, I can definitely build it up in the areas where I need to and it doesn't look heavy or cakey. It also works so well with all different primers. So if I want more of a matte look, I'll just use a super mattifying primer underneath and it stays matte all day long. But I can also use it with something like the e.l.f. primer to bring out more of that glow and my skin feels hydrated all day long and looks super smooth. I feel like so many foundations only look good with certain primers or certain powders and no matter what you do, they look the same every single time. That's not the case with this one. This one really does seem to work in so many different ways. So it's never let me down. It's only $10. I would definitely run out and repurchase this right away. For concealer, I would also pick up the Catrice True Skin High Coverage Concealer. I find these formulas to be very different. This is incredibly hydrating. It gives your skin the most gorgeous, like dewy, glowy effect, but it's also really smoothing, brightening. It blends out super easily, but it also stays in place really, really well. I always set mine into place with powder, but if you're someone who likes like that true glowy, dewy finish, you'll love the finish of this product. I think the coverage level is perfect. It has a little bit more of like a thin, 
texture to it, but if you apply it and kind of let it dry for a few minutes before blending it out, it does almost thicken up to more of like a thicker satin concealer. Again, really interesting. I feel like you can just use Catrice complexion products in different ways. So these are definitely the two that I would buy right away. And honestly, I don't know that I would end up repurchasing a lot of the other foundations and concealers I have. There are other formulas I love, but I feel like these two are just really great for everyday wear, but also on days where I want my skin to look extra flawless. For powder, I would actually go with this product. I've only really been using it for a few months, but it's become an absolute staple for me. It is the Huda Beauty Easy Bake Loose Baking and Setting Powder. I have the shade Pound Cake. So I'll use this in a couple of different ways. Usually I will use it to set my under eye concealer and then also kind of the center of my face, my T-zone, where I do tend to get a little bit oily throughout the day. It does a really great job setting my concealer into place, the rest of my makeup as well. Sometimes I'll use a brush. Sometimes I'll go in with like a triangular sponge as well. Even Either way, it looks really good, extra smooth. This does provide a little bit of coverage, but it definitely gives like a nice blur to the skin. I'll also use it to set my cream products into place if I want them to last all day long. So after I go in with like cream bronzer, or cream blush, I'll just take a very small amount of this product on a large fluffy brush and just gently go over the rest of my face and my makeup will not go anywhere all day long. I would also grab some sort of like a very light translucent powder. Probably this one from LYS Beauty. It's the Triple Fix Translucent Setting Powder. I just feel like this is really necessary on days where I want my skin to look extra glowy and I want the like natural luminosity from cream products to really show through. When I set the cream products with the Huda Beauty powder, it definitely provides more of like a matte finish. Whereas when I use something like this product from LYS Beauty that's super, super lightweight, I feel like that natural luminosity kind of shows through or it's just not quite as intense as the Huda Beauty powder. My makeup will break down a little bit faster when I use something like this, but I also feel like it plays really well with cream products. It's super lightweight, very, very finely milled, so you can layer creams over this really easily. It's great for more of a hydrating concealer if you want more of like the glowy benefits of it. And I feel like they just serve very different purposes. So on light coverage, more natural days, I might go for this. But on days where I want makeup to last and look extra smooth, I'll go for this. Okay, let's move on to cheek products. So for cream bronzer, I almost went with the Makeup by Mario cream bronzer, which I love. But that one's a little bit more intense. And honestly, if I was starting all over again, I probably would go for more of a subtle bronzer. I love this one so much. It's the Makeup Revolution Ultra Cream Bronzer. I think I hit pan on this. Like you can almost see the pan on it because I use this so often. It truly is such an effortless formula. Like you apply this to the skin and blend it out and in two seconds you're done. The product just melts into the skin in a really natural way. Usually I'll go in and apply this and then take my foundation brush with whatever's left and kind of go over the edges and it just looks so skin-like. It is such a gorgeous texture, very, very easy to work with. If you are someone who is new to cream products or they intimidate you or you find that they're hard to blend, try this formula. I hope they create some sort of cream blush that's very similar to this. That would be amazing. I would purchase it right away. This does have a very glowy, very dewy finish, which is why I almost went with Makeup by Mario, but I feel like if you go in and set it with like a powder like Huda Beauty, it does take away some of that glow and it still looks really pretty, very smooth, but not quite as intense. Or you could use the LYS powder and set it and you would still get that natural glow. So I love this product. I would also purchase a powder bronzer. I do wear cream bronzer more often these days, but I feel like a powder bronzer is nice to have on hand. I think I've grabbed this one first, the Flower Beauty Heat Wave Luminous Bronzer, and I have the shade Sunrise. This is just such a gorgeous color. It has a really pretty natural undertone on my skin tone. In the pan, it does look kind of cool, maybe more neutral overall, but on the skin, I mean, I guess it pulls that way as well. It's not quite the same on the skin as it is in the pan. On the skin, I feel like it just looks... Let me just swatch it for you so you can see. It doesn't pull orangey at all. Like it just has a very beautiful, I guess, neutral undertone. And you can tell that it has like a softness to it. It's not a satin by any means. Like it's definitely a baked powder bronzer, but it just has like this natural glow to it. It's so easy to work with. 
very, very smoothing. I love it. It's great for everyday wear. It's great to wear over cream bronzer on its own. It really is such a staple, so I would buy this one right away as well. For blush, I actually chose one liquid blush and then also a powder blush formula as well. Honestly, like day to day, I've been wearing this blush so much. It's from Rare Beauty. It's their liquid blush in the shade Hope. It's just very easy to apply. It's a very effortless formula, and I was so intimidated by liquid blush for such a long time, but this just goes on the skin so nicely. And honestly, I'll just apply this like all over my cheeks. Sometimes I'll kind of target it in one area like higher up or kind of in the center of my face. But most days when I'm wearing this, I just apply it everywhere because I feel like it gives you such a beautiful natural flush. They have a ton of colors to choose from, but Hope is kind of like my perfect everyday pinky nude. So this is the one that I would go with. I am wearing a little bit of a powder blush on top. When I was looking in the mirror afterwards, I was like, I feel like I need just something a little extra. So I used the Essence Pure Nude Baked Blush in the shade Pretty Peach, just a small amount of this to add a little bit more of a glow. I totally would grab one of these. I don't know which shade I would grab because I feel like there are so many beautiful colors, but I probably would run into Ulta and grab one of them because these look amazing on the skin. These really are so beautiful and they're just effortless. And I feel like if I was kind of starting over and purchasing makeup products again, I would choose a lot of products that are very easy to use, that apply without any extra effort, that don't take a lot of time, and I feel like all of the cheek products I chose are things that I can just throw on and go. For highlighter, it is no question. I would totally repurchase this one from Rare Beauty in the shade Exhilarate. I have two shades right now, but I feel like Exhilarate is still my favorite out of the two because it is the most beautiful gold. I love wearing this on the cheeks. I love wearing it as eyeshadow. I'm wearing it as an inner corner highlight today. It's just so beautiful. It's so flattering on the skin. You can build these up to look really intense or you can use a light hand just to apply a small amount and it still looks kind of intense, but it melts into the skin in such a natural way that it just looks so good. Ever since I purchased this product, I haven't reached for any other powder highlighter in my collection for the most part. This is so good. NYX has become my favorite go-to brand for brow products over the past few years. So I would just grab these three brow products from NYX and I feel like these would be great. I do like some other brow products as well, like Glossier's Boy Brow is a new favorite. I also love the Urban Decay Brow Blade, but honestly, I feel like I would just run into a drugstore or Ulta and grab these three because they last a long time and they do such a great job on their own or together. The NYX Stick It Stick It Brow Gel is definitely a favorite of mine. I kind of went back and forth between this one and Glossier Boy Brow, but Glossier's Boy Brow is a little bit newer to my collection, so I wanted to go with like a tried and true staple. I knew I would run out and repurchase because I have repurchased this so many times throughout the years, or I think technically this came out last year, but I've already gone through a few of them. This really does such a great job of locking your brows into place. It makes your brows look really thick and voluminous, but it also holds them into place. And I feel like once it dries out, it performs even even better, just like a regular mascara. I feel like that's the case with this one. Like this is almost gone. I have a little bit left and I feel like it performs the best that it's ever performed. And that's usually the case with this product, but I love it. I think it does such a great job. Whenever anyone is asking me for like drugstore brow recommendations, either online or people I know in real life, I always send them like straight to NYX because they have so many options so many shades to choose from and they're affordable. I would also repurchase the NYX Lift and Snatch Brow Tint Pen. I definitely prefer a brow pen over a brow pencil. I feel like it just makes my brows look a little bit more realistic, whereas a brow pencil usually is a little bit softer, but I like the look of a brow pen just to create more of like almost a textured look. And this one is really, really good. So I have two, I have Ash Brown and then also Espresso. Espresso is a little bit darker and more intense, but I feel like Ash Brown is maybe a little bit more natural on my brows. So I kind of switch back and forth between them, but I love this product. And then I would grab the NYX Micro Brow Pencil as well. I don't use a brow pencil every single day, but I sometimes will use this to kind of like define my, um, the underside of my brow or maybe extend it a little bit. I still prefer a brow pen for actually like filling in the majority of the brow, but I feel like a brow pencil is just a necessity, so this is what I would grab. For eyeshadow, I wasn't sure which direction to go in. Like at first I was like, maybe I'd repurchase a Patrick Ta Major Dimension palette. Maybe I'd grab like the Natasha Denona Biba and splurge a little bit and just have like all of my staple neutrals. But I don't know, like I haven't really been into eyeshadow palettes this year. And when I do my eyeshadow, I, I find myself reaching for more affordable options. Like I love the CoverGirl quads. I love this Jason Wu palette I have. Elf makes great quads. I've been using the LA Girl quads a lot. 
a lot of quads, I guess, but I think I probably would go with a ColourPop palette. I probably would just go in store and see like if they had like a nude neutral palette I was feeling, but two of my favorite staples that I still use after all these years are Nude Mood and that's Taupe. They're still available. I ended up repurchasing Nude Mood uh, last year was it at some point because I hit pan on a ton of shades and then I also ended up cracking it and I lost a shade as well. So this is not the original nude mood, but it is still very much well loved. I'll use this to create like a very simple warm eyeshadow look. ColourPop shadows are just very effortless. I don't buy a lot of their palettes these days because I still have quite a few from back in the day when I loved eyeshadow palettes so much and they still perform really, really well. But I was at Target the other day just looking at the ColourPop display and they have a ton of great nine pan options. And the nine pan palettes have always been my favorite because you just get enough shadows to create multiple looks without feeling overwhelmed. So Nude Mood is a staple of mine. I still love That's Taupe as well. I don't know if this was my original one or not. Like mine looks rough because I still wear it a lot. I just wore this like two days ago. It's such a gorgeous option if you like cooler tones and you do like a little bit of like a rosy vibe, although I guess kind of more of like a purpley vibe. I like that they're not just like complete neutrals in here. You get a couple of shades that do lean a little bit more pinky purple, but it is such a great option. Again, the shadows are just very effortless to apply. So I don't know that I would repurchase these right away, but I would grab like some sort of neutral color pop palette. And I feel like that would be enough for me for a while. I kind of want to do an updated, like if I could only keep 10 palettes video, because I feel like my choices would be so different this year compared to previous years. Okay, what topic were we on? Oh, oh, eye products. For eyeliner, I almost said Urban Decay's Perversion, which is my favorite liquid liner. It's super intense, really dramatic. It's a brush tip, so it glides on really easily. And I do love this one, but honestly, if I was starting all over, I think I'd probably just grab this product. It's from Tarte. It's the Double Take Awake Micro Liquid Liner and Brightener. So this does come with a liquid liner on one side. I like this one because it is very tiny. So I feel like you can create a very small wing. You can just create a very thin line. And usually with other liquid liners like Urban Decay's Perversion, my wing gets out of hand so, so quickly. So I like that when I use this, I usually do get a little bit more of a subtle look if that's what I'm going for. And then the other side is actually like a very light nude pencil liner. So I'll usually use this on my waterline if I am doing more of like a simple look just to brighten things up. And I feel like by buying this, I wouldn't feel the need to run out and purchase a liquid liner and then a nude pencil liner, which I do feel like is a staple for me. And I just kind of get both in one. For mascara, I'd actually go with the Milani Highly Rated Anti-Gravity. This is what I'm wearing on my lashes today. It does such a great job at giving you a ton of length, a good amount of volume. It makes your lashes look really dramatic, but you can also go in with like one coat and get a little bit more of a natural look. Like you can get length without a ton of volume if you don't layer it up. But I do tend to like to layer my mascaras up to get more of a dramatic look, and this is perfect. I almost said the Tower 28 Make Waves Mascara, which is... I don't know, I guess this is kind of like my number one right now, but I also feel like the Milani is just as good, just in a different way. So maybe I would end up purchasing both of them, but truthfully, like the first one that came to mind for me was Milani because it's so good. I feel like I always have to have this in my collection. Lip products would be very difficult for me because I would wanna go to Ulta and Sephora and just buy like 10 products at each store because there are so many that I love, but I narrowed it down to three and then lip liners as well. So I would just repurchase these two lip liners right away, the ColourPop Lippy Pencils in BFF and then Cool BFF. BFF is my favorite if I am creating more of like a warm toned nude look. I do have this one on today. And then Cool BFF is my favorite if I'm creating a cool look. Those are really bad swatches, but this one is BFF and then this one is Cool BFF. I love this formula. I think it's very creamy. It does a great job at defining the lips, but also helping my makeup to last a little bit longer. It's not the most intense lip liner. Like if I apply this and apply a lipstick on top, it will help make it last longer, but maybe not quite as much as other formulas out there. But because it's so creamy, I love that it applies nicely. I can wear it on its own or wear it with any lip product and it's very, very comfortable. So I would grab these right away. I think ColourPop has such a good selection. Like they have a ton of nudes light nudes, pinky nudes, dark nudes, whatever you're looking for. And then they also have a bunch of colorful shades as well. Around the holidays, they launch like a set 
of lippy pencils that has like everything. And sometimes they do smaller packs like 10 nudes or 10 reds or 10 berries. And I've gotten a set like that in the past and I've been set. Not that you necessarily need all of those lip pencils, but I do feel like it's nice to have like a range of what you wear a lot. So if you wear a lot of nudes, it's nice to have different options. And I think the formula is just really good. So anyway, these are the three lip products I would grab. The first one is from Rare Beauty. It is the Stay Vulnerable Glossy Lip Balm in the shade Nearly Neutral. I'm wearing this today. I've been talking a lot, so I feel like it's worn off. But this is the most perfect effortless formula it's basically a mix between like a lip treatment and then also a gloss so you do get that glossy finish but you get all of the benefits of a really good like liquid lip balm it's very moisturizing super comfortable and I feel like it just looks good no matter what I'm wearing if I want more of a dramatic look I'll pair it with a lip liner like I did today but if I want more of a natural like sheer finish I'll just skip the lip liner and apply a small amount I would also grab this product from Fenty this is one of my favorites the Fenty Gloss Balm Heat in the shade Hot Chocolate. I wasn't sure if I would go with this one or like the regular Gloss Balm lip gloss that has shimmer in it, but I feel like the Gloss Balm Heat is so pretty. It's like this sheer chocolatey nude. It is so beautiful. I've loved this for so long. And I love wearing this on days where I want more of a cool toned lip because it does have a little bit more of a cool finish. It's absolutely beautiful. I usually do wear it on top of ColourPop's Cool BFF. This just looks so glossy, so shiny. It has like that beautiful glass-like finish and it is a little bit of a plumping formula so I feel like it does work well to plump up the lips. The last product I picked is also a gloss so they're all like glossy finished products but that is what I would go for first. It's the CoverGirl Clean Fresh Yummy Gloss in the shade My Straw Booty. This formula is so good. I feel like I could go with any one of the yummy glosses but I like to have a good red lip gloss at all times. I almost said Patrick Ta, but I love this formula because it is so lightweight. Like it almost feels more like a lip oil. So I feel like it's very glossy, very thin and shiny, so comfortable on the lips and they smell amazing. Those are all of the makeup products I would buy first if I had to start all over. I would love to know your, like which direction you would go in. Would you purchase really affordable drugstore makeup since you're purchasing a lot at one time? Would you splurge on some of your high-end favorites or do a mix like me? And which category would you go for first? I would definitely buy brow products first, a good mascara, maybe some lip products, my foundation. I mean, that's like everything, but I feel like there are definitely products I would go with first over others. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Let me know if there's anything you want to see on my channel during the month of May. I haven't really made my full schedule. I know I have some declutter videos coming your way, a couple of speed review videos, but if there's anything else you want to see, let me know and I'll see you very soon with a new one. Bye.